Do you have pain on the outside of your ankle right here? These are your perineal tendons. It's two tendons on the outside of your leg. And this is our perineal tendonitis guide. We're gonna show you the best bracing, the best support, the best way to take pressure off to make sure it's specifically perineal tendonitis. And the hardest part of this disease is pronouncing the name because it's tough. It's perineal, what does that mean? We're gonna show you in this guide. So what are perineal tendons? They are tissue that connects your muscles up in your leg right here down to the bone. So these are your perineal muscles. Right here is your fibula. So that's your fibula bone. Attached to the back is your perineus longus up here. So you can see that red stuff right there. And then the tendon comes all the way down here. Whereas this green one is your perineus brevis. And then the green tendon comes down here. Your perineus brevis connects to the outside, which is your fifth metatarsal right here. And your perineus longus comes down around the middle of your foot and inserts underneath. So if I come down underneath all these muscle layers, you could see it actually connects down to this area right here. So it connects into the bottom of your fifth metatarsal. You can see how much muscle, look at that. That's all the muscle it's hiding underneath. It's a lot of stuff underneath there. It's a complicated tendon. Not only is it hard to pronounce, but it comes down underneath. Whereas right here, your fifth metatarsal is where the perineus brevis inserts. So you could see the green tendon comes down to your fifth metatarsal. So the motion that this does is it turns your foot out. So the perineus brevis is turning my foot out. Whereas the perineus longus up here also turns my foot down, but my big toe down. So the difference is the longus turns out and down, whereas the brevis just out. So perineus longus turns out and down. So here's what that means. When I push off like this, that's pulling and making the longus sore. Whereas if I'm spasming out like this, that will make them both sore. There are four types of injuries that can happen to your perineal tendons. So out here, four things could happen. Number one is tendonitis. Tendonitis is an inflammation of the tendon and the muscle. So this is kind of like a grade one. This is overuse over exercise, lots of running. People with high arches are more likely to get tendonitis pain. People who are pushing off with their big toe joint, people who have poor support on the outside of their ankle. But we're gonna show you how to take care of that. You want to cool that inflammation down because number two, what starts to happen is you can develop what's called chronic tendinosis. This is as two, three, four, five, six months go by, you start to have chronic pain. And like Laffy Taffy, your tendon starts to stretch and tear on the outside of your legs. This takes months to get better. This is more of a destruction at this point rather than just inflammation. The way you wanna feel this is, if up here is sore, first what you wanna do is back here. If this area is sore, then you probably have a perineal tendon problem. But if up here is sore, you have a perineus longus problem. If down here is sore, you have a perineus brevis problem. If you can't turn out, so if I hold this and I can't turn out, that means it could be both of them. But if I have a hard time pushing down with my big toe and out, it's probably just the longest. You could have a tear. So a tear means you might need surgery. You're gonna need to be in a cast. You're gonna need to be in a boot. If you feel like you have heard a snap or a tear, uh, then go see your podiatrist immediately. You, you're gonna need an MRI or an ultrasound or an X-ray to make sure nothing abnormal happened. But a tear might need surgical correction. You could have a split tear or a complete tear if it's severe enough. This could happen with chronic pain or with a severe injury. And then number four, 
is if you hear clicking and popping on the outside of your ankle, this might be something called subluxation. So what we do is I hold an ultrasound probe to the outside of your ankle, and you can actually see when you bend your ankle if it's popping in and out of there. So that's a common thing. We see that a lot. One great exercise I recommend is a massage ruler. Oh yeah, I can feel that on both perineal tendons. So up here is the perineus longus, right there is the perineus brevis. Also right here, you have a nerve that runs over the skin to both of these. This is called your sural nerve. So your sural nerve could also be injured. If injured and damaged in an ankle sprain, this could take three months to get all the way better. So that could take three months. So the way you diagnose that is you see your podiatrist, but here's how you treat it. The number one most common thing is the tendonitis. So the first thing I like to do is see how severe it is. If it's just the tendonitis, the first thing you wanna do, and this is the best treatment, is get a great shoe. So below in the show notes, we link to our favorite shoes, but great brands like Brooks, uh, Saucony, Asics, New Balance, supportive shoes. So the way to fix that is a great orthotic. So you can see right here, my foot can't twist in or out quite as much with the arch. So it doesn't twist one way or another, whereas without the insert, I can really twist a whole lot more easily. So if I put that there, It's a pretty easy twist. So you can see a great orthotic right here. This is an old one, but it's a good one. So you can see right here, when your shoe sits in it, the arch is very well supported. And what happens is when you look at the back, it can't really tilt inside that orthotic. What that does is it's hard to put a specific number on it, but the orthotic stops those muscles from having work as hard. And what happens is you're not getting as much hypermobility. The muscles aren't getting as sore. I can speak from personal experience because without my orthotics, I have crippling pain after like a 12 to 16 hour work day. I just get beat up and destroyed. So orthotics and great shoes, get those. That's the great start. Number two is you wanna get a lace-up ankle brace. So if you have severe tendonitis, a lace-up ankle brace. Number one, compression braces are pretty good. And number two, stability braces are pretty good. Number three, if you have a tear, you have to be in a boot and you have to get an MRI by your podiatrist. Get evaluated, potentially an ultrasound to see if it's subluxating. This may even need surgery. How long does it take to perineal tendonitis? I would say on average with good bracing, good shoes, good orthotics, 50% improvement in six weeks is a ballpark figure. I think that's fair to say. And number two is you get about 75% improvement at about three months, and then gradually you start to forget about this problem. But you wanna get as healthy as possible. You wanna get physical therapy, you wanna lose weight, you wanna correct muscle imbalance and tightness, and you wanna use massage therapy. So what I'm a big fan of is a massage roller stick. I'm a huge fan of massage roller sticks. Massage out the outside of your perineal tendons. So a few great products are a massage roller stick. Look at that. It's like 10 bucks, 4.5 out of five, like 5,000 ratings. Come on, you can't beat that. That thing works really well. What the studies show is science says it loosens up your muscles for a few hours. Then you have to stretch yourself at that point. If you're too sore to stretch, this is where this comes in, as well as some anti-inflammatories can help as well. Next thing is, is these are great over-the-counter orthotics. Look at that, almost 5,000 ratings, 4.5. It's a little bit more firm than the next one I'm gonna show you. Some people hate the more firm ones, but as you get used to these, these, at the beginning they won't feel as good, but once you get used to them, they will feel better than the next pair. This pair is great, but not as corrective as the ones I just showed you, so again, a lot of great ratings right here. Uh, you could see right here, great orthotics. You can't beat this brand. As far as a brace, a compression brace isn't as supportive here, but look at that, great rating. More, some, more people find this comfortable because it fits in every shoe. It's not hard to use. Uh, a lot easier to put on and fit. 
whereas the stability one gives you more support. So you could see that gives you more support, but you could see that's a pain to put on. It's hard to put on, especially if you have back and hip problems. Less people wear this, to be honest, uh, I find because it's harder to put on, even though it does give you more stability. So a lot of people prefer the compression brace.